Hi everybody, my name is Pastor Dave Myers. I'm the lead pastor here at Royal Oak Victory Church. And thanks for joining in on the message today. My prayer is that it'll strengthen your faith, encourage your heart, and speak something powerful into your life. If it turns out to be a blessing, would you please consider sharing it with someone else as one of our passions here at ROVC is to get the word out to as many people as possible. And so without further ado, let's jump right into today's message. For those of you that have been with us, you know that we have been going through a sermon series or a church campaign titled Next, all about our next steps in our journey of faith. And if you were here last week, you know Pastor Dave started us off in an, with an incredible message to motivate and encourage us to take that next step and telling us that we all have a next step to take. And so this morning, I want to build upon that, and I want to hopefully inspire and encourage and challenge all of us here this morning to once again take a next step. So before we get into it to make sure we're all awake, I need you to just turn to the person next to you and say, it's time to take a step. You said it in God's house. It has to happen now. Um, it's going to happen. But before we dive into our message this morning, um, I have a question for all of you. How many people in the room today would consider yourselves to be a plant person? And I know we have to be careful with that. I'm not talking about, I'm talking about like actual plants, like actual flowers, plants. You'd consider yourself like you love taking care of plants. Maybe you have a few plants in your house. If that's you, just raise your hand for me. If you guys are, yeah, we got quite a few. If you're online and you're joining us and you are also a plant person, just give us a thumbs up in the chat and we'll know you are there. But we, we all have these plant people in our life that we know that are very good with plants. And we all know that they're they, that type of person because what happens is you have them over to your house or you invite them into your office and the first thing they do is they run to the plant and they go and they look at it and they're inspecting it and they, they give you like all these, these wild advice like, you know, um, your plant, it's not doing as good as it should. I think you need to give it more apple juice. And you always look back like, since when did plants take apple juice? And then they do this thing. Every, every person who loves plants does this next thing. They go over and they feel the soil all the time. They go and they start feeling the soil and then they give you more advice. It's like, ah, based on this, your water was like 32 degrees. I told you 27. And it's like, this is why. And they just have all of these things to help you out. And we, and we laugh because we all know a person like this. We all know somebody in our life that is a plant person. Now, the crazy part about it is that as I was planning my message this, for this week, all I could think about in my prep time was a plant. And it was very weird because if you guys, for those of you that know me, know that huh, plants are never on my mind. I am not one of those plant people. In fact, I'm the type of person that you give me a plant and it dies. Like, I'm good at that. I'm good at that part. In fact, I was given this guy... As, as a gift, um, actually from Pastor Dustin and Beth, actually, uh, they gave me this guy. And um, you can tell he's kind of sad. He's not doing so, so good. And he's a cactus. Do you know how hard it is to kill a cactus? <laughs> this is the type of plant person that I am. I, if any of you plant people can revive him, please come and let me know after the service. His name's Christopher. Um, but I, I am not a plant person, but that's why I knew that when I couldn't get this image of a plant out of my mind, I was like, maybe this is God telling me something. I was like, I could better listen to this. And so as I kept researching in, I was like, okay, maybe I need to research into plants, see what's going on, see what God's saying. I got directed into looking at the root systems of different plants and flowers. And what I found was actually quite fascinating, and I believe this is inspired by God, and I want to share it with you this morning. What I found is there are two different main types of root systems in plants and flowers. There's the fibrous root system and the tap root system. The plant people, you guys know that. Um, but a fibrous root system, as we can see up on the screen there, consists of a group of a ton of different roots that are all similar in size and length, and they spread really far and wide, but they don't get very deep into the soil. Rather, they create kind of a thick network of roots kind of going around that kind of hold the soil together. Many types of plants that would have these would be like grasses and different, different things like that would have those fibrous roots. And the advantage is that they can spread along a wide surface, allowing them to collect minerals and water over a big surface area, all very close to the soil. 
Now, the second type of root system that you saw up there is called a taproot system. And you'll see that image pop up again. And a taproot system is one that has one main long root. You can see it on the picture there that goes really deep and everything stems off from there. In the taproot system, the main root is always the largest and the longest, and the lateral roots are smaller and shorter. Now, the advantages of that type of system is it can penetrate very, very deep, and then it's confined water and, mil and uh, minerals deep, deep underground. In fact, I got kind of sidetracked on a bunny trail, as I do from time to time, when I was doing my research, and I found this thing called a mesquite plant. And a mesquite plant actually is a taproot system, and it can have its main taproot go up to 150 feet beneath the surface. It's crazy, 150 feet deep in search of water. Therefore, these type of plants become very resistant to droughts. They can survive in droughts. They can sur survive um, in harsh environments. In fact, it even said in the article I was reading that the taproot is also great at anchoring the plant. You can imagine 100 feet deep below the surface into the soil, preventing them from being blown over in windy and harsh environments. Now you can see based on these two systems that that taproot is a much stronger and healthier system as it is able to withstand a variety of different environments. Now who knew you'd come to church this morning and become a biology expert in the process as well? You know, we're, we're diverse here at RBC. But um, I'm sure most of you guys have figured out by now that we aren't just talking about plants this morning. But in reality, what this illustration reveals is the benefits of being properly rooted and connected. Properly rooted and connected. And that's what we're going to be discussing this morning. And our sermon title today is Rooted in Connection. Rooted in Connection. You know, as part of this Next Step campaign, we believe that one of the key and vital next steps for us as a church family is taking that next step towards being connected. Being connected and to deepen our roots just like that taproot system so that we can withstand the next season coming ahead. And so this morning, that's what we're going to do. We're going to unpack the value that God puts on connection and see how we can practically do just that, how we can practically take this step together. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to Jeremiah chapter 17, verses 5 to 8. This is going to be our core piece of scripture for today. We're going to read through the whole thing and then we'll break it down as we go through. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse 5 to 8. This is what the Lord says, Cursed is the one who trusts in man, who draws strength from mere flesh, and whose heart turns away from the Lord. That person will be like a bush in the wastelands. They will not see prosperity when it comes. They will dwell in the parched places of the desert, in a salt land where no one lives. But blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. They are like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots by the stream. It does not fear when heat comes comes, its leaves are always green, it has no worries in a year of drought, and never fails to bear fruit. Now, this is an incredible portion of scripture, and I love it because the way my brain works, I love the imagery of it. It creates such a, just a vivid picture for us, and I believe it creates this picture of how God wants his people to live. And it really shows us what our next steps of connection need to look like, what those true connections are supposed to look like. And so let's break down these verses. We're going to use them this morning as blueprints for our next step forward. And so for those of you that are here this morning, I know there's going to be a few that are like, I, I feel connected. I feel like I'm doing all right. I would challenge you to say that there is a, always going to be another step in order to deepen our connection, to get even better relationships around us, and to be able to take a step forward. And so I truly believe that this word is for all of us, even you guys online, same thing. This is for you as well, for all of us to be able to take this next step together. And so in the spirit of our series, what I did is I gave us three steps in order to make this next step into connection, to be rooted in what we are doing. So step one this morning is we need to deepen our taproot. Deepen our taproot. If you're struggling to feel connected, if you're struggling to find a place to belong, this, the very first step is to know that you belong to the family of Christ. To know that you belong to the family of Christ. To deepen your connection with the God of this whole universe who created all of you on purpose and for a purpose. 
This is always our first step. It is always our first step in our Christian walk, and it's always vital if we want to see transformation truly happen in our life. You know, I love this illustration that we saw earlier of those two different root systems because you'll notice that in the taproot system, everything flows from that main root. Everything flows from there. Therefore, the depth of our connection with others can never go beyond the depth of our relationship with God. If that is the case, then we are not in a healthy system. Then we are not doing things the way that God has called us to do them. The depth of our relationship with him is where everything else will flow. Now, oftentimes we want more from the people around us. We get in that place where it's like, I need more from my, pe- my people, my friends, my relationships, all these different things. And we get incredibly frustrated when it's not happening. We can get mad at people. We can get mad at God. We can get mad at ourselves, And it creates this difficult place. I would challenge you to ask yourself, how is your relationship with God first? Do you truly have an actual intimate relationship with him? These are questions we need to ask that it's not just something we do, not just something we check off of a list every day, but do we truly know him? Do we truly have that relationship with him as a father and his child should? These are questions we need to ask because in Jeremiah chapter 17, verse seven that we read earlier, it shows where all of the blessings come from. It says, blessed is the one who trusts in the Lord, whose confidence is in him. See, all of our confidence comes from God. It comes from him and our relationship with God is always gonna be that measuring stick for everything else in our life. It will always be the measuring stick. Nothing will ever be deeper than that. See, many of us, we quote things like Psalm 37 saying, God will give me the desires of my heart and I desire for connection. God, where are you? My desire is I want connection with people. I want connection in my life. But the problem is we miss the first part of that verse, which says, delight yourself in the Lord, then he will give you the desires of our heart. It once again reinforces the fact that nothing will ever surpass our relationship with God. It needs to be our number one priority and the first step for all of us here this morning. Because God is our taproot. He is our greatest source of nutrients. He is our guide and without him, life becomes very shallow. It becomes very dissatisfying and we wonder why we're so frustrated and angry. I would encourage you to look at that relationship because we will find ourselves being swayed by the winds of circumstance and all the things that we face in this world if we are not grounded and rooted in that relationship as number one in our life. It needs to be the number one priority that we would be anchored in the truth of his word, anchored in that relationship with him. So step one is we need to deepen our taproot. Step two this morning is we need to expand our lateral roots. Expand our lateral roots. Jeremiah 17, eight that we read earlier said, they will be like a tree planted by the water that sends out its roots to the stream. Sends out its roots to the stream. You know, I really love this because the the wording there is so important. Sending out, see that requires an action. That requires an action or requires a step and it's not always easy. See, expanding your lateral roots means you're gonna have to push yourself beyond that place of comfort all the time to be able to truly do that. In fact, the word, the, the word send out in the original Hebrew um, when it was written is actually shalak, shalak, which means to stretch out, to extend, or to reach forth. You know, I love that because it shows what this truly looks like, that there is effort to extend, to reach, to stretch, to actually spread those roots out. It creates that image of the effort involved if we want to truly attain community. So how do we practically do this? How do we practically get community in our life? Well, I believe the best way to find out how is first for us to define what true community is. And community is defined as a feeling of fellowship and connection with others as a result of sharing common attitudes, interests, and goals. Now, I like that because it's showing it's fellowship or coming together with others and sharing. Coming together and sharing. These are the two pillars of connection and relationship if we truly want to have a depth of level of connection. Coming together, sharing. Now, speaking of next steps, maybe for some of us in the room this morning or online, our next step is simply just coming together. You know, maybe we've been here, we come on a Sunday and we feel like, you know, we're coming together, but we're not getting everything we need. I encourage you to take that next step, to come together in a different way. You know, this tells us something right off the bat when we read this, that that the definition of community is coming together. 
which means that we need to be gathered with each other. You know, Pastor Dave touched on this last week in his sermon about we can't accomplish the one another's of the Bible alone. Coming together is so important, gathering with other people to be lifted up in those times when you need them. You know, maybe for some of us, we've never actually taken that step into community here at church. You're going through life and maybe you even have a lot of friends. You have lots of people in your life. You would be exactly like that fibrous root that we just saw. Um, You're spread far, you're spread wide. You have lots of different connections, but none of them are going deep. You're the person that when you ask them how they're doing, they respond with how many Instagram followers they have. I don't know if any of you guys have had that person. I have. I've been there where I've talked to that person. I'm like, hey, how are you doing today? Like how, just how's life? What's going on? Well, I got 3,000 Instagram followers. You kind of wait for a second. It's like, well, that doesn't answer my question um, at all, really. Because, see, there's a major difference between followers on social media and friendships in real life. It's so important for us to understand that God wants us to have those deeper relationships. See, in the Bible, in both the Old and the New Testament, it defines the word friend by actually using three characteristics. This is how uh, the biblical definition of friend or friendship. There's three components that must always be there. There's association, loyalty, and affection. Association, loyalty, and affection. And it actually, when you do a word study on that word friend throughout the Bible, it talks about it in three different categories, actually. It actually breaks it down into three different levels of meaning for that same word. There's friendship as association only, which was what I would consider our social media followers that we have. We got association only. Then there's friendship as association plus loyalty. And then the third level of friendship that's listed is friendship as association plus loyalty plus affection. You know, my question for all of us this morning is what level of friendship do you have? What level of relationships do you have in your life? Of those followers on Instagram, who's going to sit with you when you lose a loved one? Who's going to pray for you when you need a job? Who's going to celebrate the birth of your new child with you? Or who's going to stand for you when you're struggling to stand on your own? It's important for us to look at the people we have in our life and see, you know, what that can look like and the depth of friendship that we truly have. You know, for me, I know I've seen this countless times right here at the church of actual true friendship and what it can do in your life. You know, one of the biggest surprises to me actually coming to the church for the first time when I was a new believer was the depth of relationship that I experienced. Right here in this very building, walking into those back doors for the first time, it was a little bit of a smaller building at that time, but um, walking into those doors and just feeling loved, feeling accepted for who I was and, and people all around me simply wanting the best for me because I was a brother and a family um, and part of the family of Christ. You know, that's important, that's valuable. That is so, so valuable and that's what God wants for all of us. I know for me, it changed my life. It allowed me to be comfortable with who I was and it pushed me to be better because I knew that I had a support system around me. It pushed me to be better because I knew that there would be people there to pick me up when I fell down and people to celebrate when I was doing well. And you know, the place that I found this most often throughout my time here was in our Connect Group ministry. You know, I had the privilege in, uh, in my time here of being a part of many connect groups, leading some connect groups, and actually at one point leading the connect groups for the church for a little while. And, um, and it, it's one of the most amazing settings to truly build those deep, intimate relationships. You know, one of the perfect examples is that we just finished uh, doing a leadership connect group with our 180 student leaders. So all of the leaders from Wednesday nights that look after your kids, we were literally studying John Maxwell's leadership gold material and trying to grow and become better leaders so we can better impart wisdom and knowledge to the kids that we are leading. I'm telling you, in that group, something special happens. Something amazing happens when you sit around the table with common goals, common interests, and go after something together. I'm telling you, it is the most inspiring, encouraging, and healing experience to be able to just be surrounded by people that just want the best for you in your life. That's important. The intimacy of the small group setting allows you to do that. It allows you to have real and genuine conversations that wouldn't come naturally just through our everyday life very often. 
you know, where you're asked to reflect and ponder questions at a depth that, that really stimulates that relationship and growth. It stimulates those things because that's why they are there. They're so we can grow with one another. You know, 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verse 25 to 27 gives us a kind of an image of what, you know, true connection was supposed to look like. And I love this um, within the church body. It says, so that there should be no division in the body, but that its parts should have equal concern for each other. If one part suffers, every part suffers with it. If one part is honored, every part rejoices with it. Now you are the body of Christ and each of you is a part of it. Now that's so amazing, even just reading that. Each of you is a part of it. Each of you on the other side of that screen, you're a part of it. Everyone is a part of it. And that's the type of connection that I know I got to experience being here. And my prayer and my encouragement this morning is that all of us this morning would be able to experience that same level of connection in our life. That we would be able to see those very same things happen in our life. You know, it's one of the greatest desires of our world right now. It's one of the greatest desires of our world. Regardless of age, demographic, connection is one of the most wanted desires by people right now. And this is an opportunity to come and not only find connection, but to find healthy, deep, Christ-centered connection. That's important. That's so, so incredible that we get that opportunity. Now, unfortunately, it isn't just that easy. As we talked about at the beginning, there's two parts to finding connection. There's coming together, and the second part was sharing. Coming together and sharing. Now, some of us, maybe we've got the coming together part, haven't quite figured out the sharing part. And it's funny because you don't ever have to teach somebody how to be selfish, but you have to teach people how to share. Don't believe me? Look at any sort of kid. If you give them a toy, they don't need to be taught how to keep that toy. They do have to be taught, however, to share that toy with other people around them. Now, if that example doesn't strike home for you, I know that this one will. I'm confident this one might hit a little too deep. This is a very real example. You ready? Husband and wives, (laughs) you don't need to be taught how to eat the whole meal on your plate in front of you. You don't need to be taught. When there's that delicious meal right in front of you on that plate, you've got it. You don't need to be taught how to eat that. You do, however, need the spirit of God when your wife stakes her fork into that plate and takes some of your meal off of that plate. I'm going to be honest, you need, you need the Spirit of God in that moment. If you, if you catch me ever speaking in tongues in Applebee's, it's because Chas stole my chicken wing, okay? <laughs> this, is, this is real. This is serious. And we've all been there. We don't need to be taught how to be selfish. I mean, and it happens all the time. Husbands, I know you relate to me here. It happens all the time. You go to a restaurant or you go somewhere, you're like, hey, honey, do you want something? She always responds, no, I'm good. I'm doing fine. I'm all right. The second your food arrives, the second she has her fork in your plate with the classic line, and they all use the same line, maybe I'll just have a little. (laughs) They never have a little. (laughs) Um, It's crazy. It's crazy. Luckily, they say love conquers all. Um, But... uh, (laughs) But you can see in our life all over the place that none of us have a problem being selfish. But a lot of us have a problem when it comes to sharing. Now, God didn't ever call us to be perfect along this journey of life, but he did call us to share in our process, to be able to share in our process, to be open and vulnerable so that we can actually have that depth of relationship that we just read in 1 Corinthians, where we all care for one another, where we're lifting each other up. You know, my challenge is if you don't know, if you don't have people around you right now that are leading and helping you grow, then it's time to take your next step and find those people. It's time to expand your roots and find those people. If you don't have people running beside you with common goals and interests, then it's time to send out your roots and find them. And find them, seek those people out. And if, you, and if you don't have people in your life that are better than you, that are running ahead of you, that, that push you to be better every single day, then your next step is to find that person. Regardless of where you're at in your life, there is always a next step when it comes to connection. 
I know for me personally, being somebody that is, that is younger and kind of trying to figure out this crazy thing called life, one of the most valuable um, connections for me are my mentorship connections, where I have somebody that's mentoring me and giving me wisdom and helping guide me to try and figure out how to walk my days out and live this life. So I would encourage you, whether you are gonna be the mentor to somebody or whether you're looking for that mentor, I guarantee you both of you are looking for each other. <laughs> And oftentimes we need to just send out those roots and actually seek out that connection because we all so desperately need it. You know, I've had the privilege of both being that mentor to people and being mentored. I'm telling you, we both benefit. It helps us all. That connection is valuable and it's desperately needed in our world right now. So step one is we need to deepen our taproot. Step two is we need to expand our lateral roots. And step three, which is maybe the most painful, is we need to remove your spoiled roots. Remove your spoiled roots. See, for many of us, we've become victim to spoiled roots, to relationships that have caused us more harm than they have good. And maybe those relationships are the reason that you aren't growing that the reason that you aren't growing is actually not because of anything on the surface, but it's because of the roots that you have. See, this last season that we've all been through has caused us to be rooted in isolation and also rooted in negative relationships. And you know, it was hard. We didn't have have an option. We had to isolate. We had to do different things and it was difficult. But that means that in order for us to truly grow, we're gonna have to get rid of some of those habits that have been created. Some of those things that we picked up that we became rooted in along the process. To understand that removing some of those things could be the very thing that's holding you back from growth right now. You know, if there's, if there's one thing that really stood out to me in this pandemic, and this uh, speaks to the negative relationships, is that um, as humans, we love to gravitate towards relationships with people who think the same way we do. We love that. Like, that's, that's great. We, that's what we look for. And we search out those who are going to agree with us on everything that we say so we never experience any conflict. Which is great if you want to feel safe and confident and encouraged all the time. But it's not that great if we want to grow and move forward in our life. It's not a true healthy relationship when you really think about it, where you're challenged to grow. So maybe the reason that you feel stuck right now is because you are associating with people that don't want you to grow, that they don't want to see growth for you in your life, that don't want you to see you take that, your, your relationship with God to a next level, that don't want you to see you step into a new area where you're challenged to grow in a new way. You know, I think for far too long um, over this past season, our checklist for connection has been really wrong. Our checklist that we've had for the people we'll associate and connect with has really been backwards. I believe this morning that what we need to do is we need to change that checklist. It needs to change from political alignment, vaccine preferences, and social statuses. And that friendship checklist needs to change to Christ-centered, spirit-filled, prayer-focused, and purpose-driven. Those are the people we want around us. Those are the people we need to associate with. See, it's very easy to look for those that think the same way you do, but it's very powerful when people with two different um, mindsets can come together and serve God in unity together because the purpose that he has is greater than all of the other stuff. Coming together and unifying and staying forward together is so, so important. And this is why we gather. This is why the gathering of believers happens because the roots that we have, the roots that are created here in this place, the roots we have will determine the nutrients that we get. And that will determine how far we can go. See, it's a very, very important concept to grasp. I'm gonna say it one more time because I think this is so, so important for those of us that are feeling stuck, for those of us that haven't experienced maybe growth in a little while. This is so, so important for us to understand that the roots that we have will determine the nutrients we get and how far we can go. It's so, so valuable to have these good, strong roots in your life. So the question becomes then, how do I know if my roots are spoiled? How do I know if I'm off track? Like, I hear what you're saying, but how do I know? Well, the answer I was actually found in the first verses we read. Jeremiah chapter 17, verse eight says, it has no worries in a year of drought and it never fails to bear fruit never fails to bear fruit. See, a bad fruit system will not, a bad root system will not produce fruit. 
If you aren't seeing the fruit that you want in your life, maybe it's time to check the connections that you have. What you're rooted in will determine the health of your fruit. See, a lot of us in this room, we have, we have big dreams. We have big things that we even feel that God has put in our spirit where we feel big things for our businesses, big things for our marriages, big things for, for our ministries that we have. We have all these amazing visions that we want to accomplish and we're getting so frustrated at hitting the wall over and over again and not feeling like we're getting the breakthrough that we believe God is saying to us. I would encourage you guys to check the connections that you have. Where are you rooted? What is the soil that you are planted in? Because it will never grow if it's not in the proper environment. Those visions may be from God. They may be what he's speaking to you, but you need to get grounded and rooted because along the journey, there's gonna be times where there is a drought. There's gonna be times where it gets windy and it gets stormy. We need to have the proper roots that we can withstand to get to that place that we are all trying to go. You know, some of us, in, in, when you are at this place now where we have to make that really hard decision, that hard choice to remove the roots in our life that are holding us back, those things that are holding us back and not helping us grow the way we should. And I promise you, as you begin to remove those things, as you begin to remove those roots, it may be painful in the moment. It may be really difficult in the moment. But I promise you, it will be the very thing that starts you on track to growing again. It'll be the very thing that gets you back to growing again, to feeling fulfilled again, seeing breakthrough in your life again. It will allow you to feel satisfied in what you're doing again, feel satisfied in your life because you're seeing God show up and move. So our first step is we need to deepen our taproot. Second step is we need to expand our lateral roots. And our third step was to remove the soiled roots. You know, it's funny, oftentimes, you know, we can come into church on a, on a Sunday morning and we can hear a word that maybe speaks into our heart, something that really like maybe encourages us or convicts us or maybe does a little bit of both. And we ask the questions of like, well, what, what now? What do I do now? And sometimes it can be hard to figure out how do I really implement what I just heard? I really want to, but I don't know how. You know, today it is actually very, very easy Today we're blessed because we actually have the very next step, how to do it, right set up for you all this morning. And it's found in this book right here. It's found in this book right here that was on your guys' seats when you came in this morning. See, this is the next step for all of us. It's all found right in this book because these groups provide you the opportunity to deepen your relationship with God You know, to deepen your taproot, there's lots of different things in here, Bible studies, different places where you can deepen those biblical foundational roots. You know, these groups also provide us an opportunity to to expand our lateral roots and grow in community. Every single one of these, you're gonna meet new people. You're gonna get to get around um, fellow believers. You're gonna get to get around people maybe you wouldn't normally have met. It gives you that opportunity to find good connection. You know, what these also do is they do give you that opportunity to remove some of those spoiled roots, to surround yourself with good soil and actually have a physical place where it's okay to heal, where it's okay to just heal, to get through some of the the hard things you're facing. You can find that in some of these groups where you can just heal and become who you really wanna be, not who you're trying to be for everybody else, but who God has called you to be, to heal and grow in that way. You know, connect groups are a biblical model of a healthy church. And there's a difference, you know, between a, just a big church and a healthy church. And as you guys have seen over the past couple of weeks, God's doing something here. Our church is growing. People are coming. People are experiencing salvation. We want to be ready for that. We want to be ready for what's coming. And, we, and one of the best ways to do that is to be involved in a connect group. As size continues to grow, we need to continue to maintain health. And health isn't just found in just getting bigger and just growing numbers. You know, the church is the body of Christ. And how many of you know when it comes to our personal bodies, just getting bigger isn't the greatest option. I mean, maybe when we were in like high school, it's like, I'm gonna get big. But then after we got out of high school, it's like, big's not what I wanna be referred to as anymore. Um, Because getting healthier is much different than just accumulating size. And this is so valuable for us as a church because connection is the lifeblood of the church. 
It allows us to maintain strong, healthy, rooted, deep connection while still growing and bringing more people to know God. That's important. That is valuable. That is something that God is going to do, use to just continue to build this church and fill this place. And so I'm truly excited about what's around the corner. I want to encourage you guys to, to make sure you grab the little slip in there, sign up for one of these groups. There's a table out there. It is going to be amazing. This is, this is going to be a really good season for us as a church family and for our Connect Group ministry. But this time, as we close, I want to just invite you all to stand. You know, I, I firmly believe, I, I strongly, strongly believe that just like a plant or a flower that is properly rooted in proper soil in, with, in the environment that it is supposed to be, that plant has no choice but to grow. That, has, that plant has no choice but to grow exponentially because it is in the proper conditions. You know, I believe that our church and our ROVC family is about to see that very same thing that very same thing that God is gonna do something huge here. He has already started it. And as we continue to get planted and healthy and getting the right nutrients in those places of connection, every person that walks into that door will be able to feel like they're part of this family. That's important, that's what people need. And then as they feel like they're part of the family, they'll come to know Christ and this place will be filled. God's gonna do it. He is going to do it. This this whole area of becoming rooted in connection, it will be the fuel that fans the flame of revival in this place. It will be the fuel to the flame. It will grow in an exponential way. So as we close, this challenge goes out to all of you. Every one of us here has this next step to make towards connection. Some of us need to find connection. Some of us need to deepen our connection. Some of us need to become mentors and some of us need to find mentors, but all of us have a next step. All of us have a next step to take in order to be ready and prepared and filled and encouraged for this next season ahead. So why not try it today? Why not start today? Why not now take that step? Can you imagine what God will do when this church of 500, 600, 700 people all takes one step forward? My goodness. It is going to be an amazing, amazing thing to see. And I cannot wait to just watch what God is going to do as we deepen our connections and take that risk, take that step, and we do it all together. And so let's pray this morning. Heavenly Father God, we thank you so much for what you're doing here. Father God, that we can feel your spirit and your presence in this place. That God, that you are starting a new thing. You are doing something right here, right now through this church family. God, I pray that we would all take that next step that you are calling us to do towards connection. That Father, that even right now, for those of us in this room that maybe are wondering what what to do, how to do it, maybe struggling to muster up the courage to take that step. Father, I just pray that you would pour your spirit on your children right now. That God, that more of your spirit would be involved in this situation, that they would be able to say, God, I trust you. God, I'm not taking this step alone. God, I'm taking this step with you and we can do this together. I am just gonna continue to faithfully serve my God. So Father, we thank you for this. We cannot wait to see what is to come. We give you all the honor, the glory, the praise, Father. Your church will be built. Your church will be healthy, God, and we will continue to faithfully serve you. And so Father, we just thank you and we pray it all in Jesus' name, amen, amen. Hey everybody, thanks for watching the message today and I hope that it lifted and encouraged you in some way. If you made a decision to follow Christ today, we would love to know about it. And the best way to do that, to let us know, is by heading over to our website at rovc.ca and clicking on the tab that says connect with us. Also, if this message was a blessing to you, we'd love it if you could get the word out by liking and subscribing or even giving to our ministry. If you're interested in making a donation, you can do so by heading again to our website and clicking on the Give tab. Again, thanks for joining us and may God richly bless you.